Hi, I'm uh, now doing notes for chapter 2, section 7, and trying my wife's computer to see if that works any better. But it's called Fitting a Model to Data, and 1, uh, 2, 8 is going to kind of be a continuation of this, so this is kind of the start of it. And if you think back to sections 1 and 2, when we did direct variation and inverse variation, this is going to be similar in that we had four steps. We first would write the general variation equation, then we'd find k, then put k back in the equation, and then use the equation to solve a problem. We essentially are going to partway through the notes get to those exact same steps, but instead of having the equation be given to us saying like y varies directly as the square of x, uh, we're going to have to graph to find it. So that's kind of where we're going. Uh, to get there, uh, you could skip this part really if you wanted to, the Roman numeral 1. That's more just to make sure we're kind of all on the same page. Uh, but Roman number one, practicing recognizing variation, if you want to write it. Um, the point is, if I were to get a XY chart, and I go through and graph those points, and it works, shows up like this one here on the upper left. The question then, is that a line, is it a parabola, a hyperbola, or an inverse square, also known as a tornado? And uh, Looks like if you would kind of connect these, it would go through the origin, or at least be close, and that's going to be a parabola. So that should be in the form of y equals kx squared, or a parabola. Uh, these points here, if you were to graph them, again, they go through the origin, so you know it has to be direct variation, but they're in a straight line. So that then would be y equals k times x. Our last one down here is kind of the problem child. Because both the hyperbolas and the inverse squares, tornadoes, uh, look the same. Kind of the inverse square should drop a little bit faster and then kind of level out sooner um, along your x-axis. But it's kind of hard to know for sure which one it is, or you could kind of guess from the curve. But for this, we know for sure it's inverse. And it's either y equals k over x, the hyperbola equation, or it's going to be y equals k over x squared. And later on in the notes we'll come back to an example um, that kind of ties into what do you do uh, when you're not sure. But moving on to the next thing then, um, Roman numeral 2 I kind of called it steps. and uh, um, So these are kind of the same steps that we had before uh, but with a couple additions since the equation isn't given to you. My plan was then number one we'll just call it identify x and y. So identify x and y. And what I mean by that is x then is going to be the independent variable. And y is going to be the dependent. Because often when we have story problems they won't actually be x and y given to us. So instead you have to look at it and you have to say, okay, what depends on what? And the reason that that matters, I, I'm going to erase this next graph, but say you get a situation where it's going to be a parabola. If you get x and y done correctly, your points then should look like a nice parabola, something like this. Uh, but if you switch x and y, they're not going to look that way. Instead, they're going to look, you know, so it looks like a line so far, but now it curves the wrong direction and you're kind of stuck with uh, what's the equation for that. It turns out it's a, it's a square root function but we haven't really gone over that so make sure you get x and y right and if things are looking terrible uh, maybe try switching them around and see if that works any better. Uh, so number two, uh, the point of uh, getting those is to graph them. So I'm going to say graph the points uh, to determine the general equation. equation. And often I find it helpful to label your x and y axes if the variables are different. And then it gets easier to, once you graph it, you can look at it and say, okay, so y, look at what's on the y axis, um, that's going to be y equals k times x, you know, or p equals k times s, or something like that. Um, or it could be y equals kx squared, or y equals k over x, or y equals k over x squared. Now I suppose if, if you're a little behind in the notes, you don't have to write all these. If that determine the general equation, you know what it means. But it's going to be one of those four. Um, 
At this point, I think I'm actually going to erase those four just so it all shows up on one page. Um, third, then. Now, basically, we're where we were in sections one and two. So you could just go through our normal steps. We found the equations. Next, we find k. Fourth step is put k in the equation. And now we get into something new. You could assume you're right, but it's going to be safest to go back and for number five then say, check the equation with another point. And usually I use one point to find k that's either a real low x value or a real high x value. And then when I'm checking it, I'll pick a point that's a long ways away. Uh, because if you're checking a point that's close to the one you use to find k, and this will make more sense in a minute, uh, you may find that you're off just a little bit with y, and it's like, is it a good fit? Is it a bad fit? Is it rounding error? Or if you pick a point that's a long ways away, usually it's pretty clear. And then final step, six, it retry if it doesn't work. So retry the equation if uh, it doesn't check, we'll say. And all this is going to be coming up in the notes on the next page. Uh, so once you get that copied down, then we can flip to the next page. And I wrote an example here. Uh, you may want to take a minute to maybe pause the video, copy down x and y if you're writing out the whole example. Um, but if we were to go through and graph these, a lot of people I've found are really bad at graphs. Um, I'd encourage you to always start at 0, 0 when we're doing these, unless your data is like way out in nowhere land. But it's, it's kind of nice to have the origin as a reference point. And how I graph it is I look at my x values. Okay, my largest x value is 5.6. So I'm just going to put my largest x value actually is 6 on the graph. Then from there, it's a whole lot easier to break up. Right in the middle, it's going to be 3. And then I can pretty easily estimate where 1 and 2 will be. And then same thing for 4 and 5. But I found that's a better way of labeling axes for me than to start out with like 1, 2, 3, and then I need to make it really long or it just doesn't fit. If I do the same thing for my y values, I'm going to say my highest point is 40, because that will nicely accommodate the 36.666. Got to love it when a math problem has the mark of the beast in it, the 666, but I digress. Um, then we can put 20 right in the middle, put in a 10 and a 30, and we're good to go. But that, I found, is a really nice way to label graphs. And uh, all right, so 1.2, so I'm a little bit past 1. Then I'm here's 30, so 36.6 repeating is going to be a little bit past that. And uh, a little bit past that midpoint. Then 2.3, so kind of 2 and a third, and I'm up to just below the 20. And you want to be reasonably accurate, but uh, really we're just using this to determine kind of the general equation, and, and those will often pop off the screen at you when you're looking at them. So that's my 3.7, and now my 5.6 is 7.86, so a little under 10. Um, something like that. Okay, now when we look at this, uh, we know it's not a line, it's not a parabola, it doesn't go through the origin. So we're stuck with, it's either y equals k over x, which is our hyperbola, or it could be y equals k over x squared. I figured I'd give you one of the tough ones in the notes. If you can do this one, uh, you can do the others. Uh, from there then, so I look at my cheat sheet for which one to do first. Um, Let's, let's try the hyperbola one first. So for that, like I was saying, let's go through and take a point. And I'd either use this point to find k or the bottom point to find k, and then use the other one to check it. Uh, so if I take that top one, so y I'm going to say is 36.666 equals k over 1.2. Then from there, I can take my calculator and multiply both sides by 1.2. And I come up with 43.9992. So k then is going to be 43.9992. And once you find k, we always put it back in our equation. So let me scroll down a little bit. And 
then I'd have y equals 43.9992 all over x. Now to check it, let's go with a point that's as far away as possible. And that should work then, if it's the right equation, to put in the y value 7.86, 43.9992, divided by x, which is 5.6. So since 43.9992 is the last thing on my calculator, I can just hit divided by 5.6, and I get 7.857. And so it looks like that's right, you know, 7.86 is maybe I'll write is approximately equal to 7.857. If I were to round to two digits, I'd round that up to a 6. So it looks then like our equation should be, it's a hyperbola. If, if this were actually the math problem I was doing, honestly, I'd quit now. Uh, but I want to kind of show you what happens if it doesn't work out correctly, just so you can kind of identify, you know, when you have a problem. Um, I'm not going to redo the graph. I just kind of cleared the ink off my page and start out with this again. But if we had thought it was an inverse square or a tornado, um, it would be y equals k over x squared would have been our general equation. And to try that then, you do the same exact steps. y 36.666 equals k over, now I need to square my 1.2, so 1.2 squared. And I'm just going to multiply both sides by 1.2 squared, so times 1.2 squared, and I get 52.799. I'll just leave it at three decimal points. So k is 52.799. And like normal, once you find k, always put it back in the equation. So my equation becomes y equals 52.799 all over x squared. A mistake that I've seen happen a bunch of times is as people are going through the problem, uh, they forget to square the x value here, and then it still doesn't work, and they kind of panic on them. But, okay, so my other point then is the y value is 7.86 equals 52.799. And if this was the right equation, I could put my x value of 5.6 in there and square it. So I'm going to punch in that right-hand side, 52.799, and on my calculator I'm just going to do divided by so it has all the digits in there, 5.6 squared. So I'm dividing by 5.6 squared. And here it's really pretty obvious, 7.86 does not equal uh, 1.68. So then you know that it can't be uh, this equation. It's not an inverse square. And that pretty much rounds out the notes. Um, maybe one final comment as far as what I was trying to get at with checking points that if we had picked the wrong one uh, so say the hyperbola should nicely go through all these points the inverse square though we know it's going to go through that first point we found a k value that makes it hit this first point and we'll see how I do kind of in drawing on the fly but then it's probably going to be fairly close to that second point a little further off from the third point, but by the time we get over here to the fourth point, it's going to be uh, off significantly more. So that's why I was saying, you know, if, if you try checking it with a point that's close, you get into the is it rounding error, is it the wrong equation, check it with a point that's a long ways away and usually it's pretty obvious. So that's it for now.